What's going on guys? So this is the first video I have made um, in a while and I had posted in a while about the status updates on the car. So I actually managed to get the car back. As you can see right here. We actually got her on jack stands right now. Uh, finishing up some things that needed to be done to the car um, because I was working on a video doing an installation for you guys uh, installing an airlift 3p kit uh, so right now I got the car back went ahead and took a look at over everything they did because it did an oil change you know as a car guy myself you got to make sure sometimes that certain things are put right because I've had issues where I take my car to Ford and they do an oil change and they'll put like eight quarts instead of the 10 quarts that's recommended for these cars, specifically the 18 through 24s, they take 10 quarts of oil. Um, so I'm taking a look of certain things here and there, uh, see if everything's fine, you know, if anything's like loose, because sometimes there are certain dealerships that will forget a bolt, will forget a screw, will forget a clip, and something's loose on there. Um, but that's pretty much what I'm doing today. So, um, on my previous video, I talked about the car being at Ford for the last three weeks or so. Well, at the time of the video, it was two weeks, but it was three weeks in total. Uh, so the main issue that I had with this car was that one thing Ford didn't say on their spec sheet they were doing when they actually swapped from the S550 to the S650 was that the brake booster itself, let me see if I can get a better picture. That's the brake booster. And I know you car guys right now will probably be scratching your head and it's like, damn, that's not what a brake booster is supposed to look like. So for you guys that don't know what a brake booster is supposed to look like, it's supposed to be like this circular drum and I'm gonna attach a picture. It's supposed to be the circular drum that usually has a vacuum line connected and it's connected to your brake pedal. Um, and that's what, you know, actuates your, your booster. So what Ford did, uh, not booster, sorry about that, uh, I mean brakes. So what Ford did on the 24 is that they actually put a electric booster, uh, electric brake booster. And as you can see right there, you can already tell that it's got uh, computers and stuff and chips and sensors all in there. And it has a shit ton of lines. Like, it has those brake lines right there plus like 10 more in the back. Let me see if I can study the image. Let's zoom in. See that? Oh, that's electronic. So I'm all for moving technology forward and um, putting more technology in certain cars, especially sports cars, because technology usually tends to help. But when it comes down to the brake booster, you're gonna get an issue like I did. So for me, this part was actually defective and it ended up going bad on me while I was driving. So they replaced this one, well not this one, but the original one um, with a second part. And in my head, I was like, you know, second part, you know, I, I doubt that the part would be defective from Ford. You know, maybe it's just my car that's a POS. So it turns out that the second part that they actually ordered for that brake booster was bad as well. So the brake booster you see on this car right now is actually the third one. So it took them three boosters to fix the issue. And then they had to bleed obviously all the lines and stuff like that um, and to get everything else working. But other than that, after fixing that issue, they actually managed to get everything working perfectly fine. And I haven't had any issues since I got the car back. So I would say that this repair was actually a plus and shout out to veterans ford for doing such a great job with this and actually pretty fast too because for a new car they had me out in three weeks and i've seen people take at least like four five six a month as long as, as like from what i've heard to get the car back from the dealership especially these 24s since i believe that at the time of this recording the factory is actually on strike so it's going to be harder to get the parts so now what I'm going to show you next was actually a video that I was actually working on. Um, it's actually completed. I completed it a couple weeks ago. Like maybe I think two weeks into me owning this car. And you guys are going to be like, 
excited for this one because I've been talking about it since I posted my first video on YouTube. Also, if you guys can, please show support and follow me at Warlord S650 on Instagram. That's where usually I keep all my pictures at. But let's go ahead and show you what's in store. That's right, Paralift 3P. And it's very convenient too because I have it hidden. I can put my groceries and stuff in there, you know, cargo space. I was actually cleaning out the trunk. And if anything, I just lift this up and all this is removable and everything's tucked all nice and neat. I actually have an installation video that I actually have to finish editing and posting up and maybe do a couple reshoots because at the time of me installing this, I actually ran out of battery on my phone. Um, but I am working on that video and I will be posting this soon enough because in, on this channel, we like to do things on jack stands and with a jack, which is sadly what a lot of YouTube channels don't do anymore. Usually it's like, hey guys, we bought this airlift kit. Now let's go put have the mechanic put it on, you know? And it's like, they snap their fingers and it's like instantly installed. And that's kind of the thing that I miss about old school YouTube. It's just the fact that you could go ahead and watch a YouTube video, learn something from it, right? Apply it to yourself. And it's just something I want to keep um, posting on YouTube. Just me in my driveway with some jack jack stance and doing good old content.